Finally, I get to get my hands back into the Afternoon Express kitchen where we are still focusing on all things fish. Now, there is no denying that fish and chips is a fan favorite all over the world. Now, we're going to show you how to turn this pub grub staple into a dish fit for your inner foodie. We're talking next level deliciously fakey and crispy fish goujons served with a fresh classic mayonnaise avocado tartare sauce. This sounds magnifique. Mm -hmm. It does, it sounds magnifique and I just wanna answer everyone that might be asking themselves, what the heck is a goujon? <laughs> What's a goujon? It sounds amazing though. It is, it, it is, it sounds fancy and I think this is a good way if you wanna base, perhaps show off to your friends and show them something that is simple but uh, you know, very easy to make. Goujons in essence, if we're talking about chicken strips and beef strips, that in essence would be what it is. It's like fish strips but they're just breaded and fried into these beautiful things and I see that uh, Julie's already started with the process for us there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I see you started with the flour first. What does the flour actually do? this instance? Well, the flour is going to um, dry the fish and help the egg and the crumbs stick onto the piece of fish. Okay. Mm, and that is quite simple, Julie, because I see you've also added some pop, some um, parsley. Absolutely. I actually wanted to ask exactly that. Usually when people do do the process of frying, they season their flour, their egg and their breadcrumbs. And I mean, not to the visible eye, it doesn't look like you have done either. Why is that? Well, it's always nice to put a bit of salt and pepper on your fish, but this parsley in the breadcrumbs is going to add a lovely flavour. Mm -hmm. Because you know, Bale, whenever you're baking or cooking rather with herbs and stuff like that, remember that the heat also releases the essence of whatever the ingredients mm. you're making are. So in this instance, the reason we've put them on the outside is at the, as they cook, the freshness of that parsley will definitely work well with what I'm making over here. Because yes. I think a fish dish is not complete without some sort of tartar um, a dip or sauce. And that's what I'm on duty of today. I'll be making a avocado style tartar sauce. And we're starting with the basics that you always find in any type of tartar sauce. Mm. We've got over here some gherkins and some capers, not only do they add the texture for us, but they also add the zinginess that we want from a tartar sauce. And I'm also adding some uh, Dijon mustard to this. You can definitely add any other acidity of your choice. You could add lemon juice, but I'm also gonna be adding our clove classic mayonnaise. Yeah. And as you can see, we're going with the number two level of tanginess. As you know, it also comes in three levels of tanginess. We've got number one, which is mild, number two, which is medium, and then number three, which is that tangy, strong, zingy flavor, but we're keeping it a little bit on the milder side and just using number two. Yeah, because I find um, with everything else in that tartar sauce, it kind of has its own zing <laughs> as well. In fact, yeah. let me have a taste as we, as we speak about it. And to me, I mean, this green color is thanks to that avocado. Definitely. Now, Julie, I don't know if you're much of a um, tartar sauce person, mm. if you ever do make your own tartar sauce at home Ooh. and stuff like that. Mm. I love tartar sauce. Mm. Mm. What additions do you think would you, okay, what additions do you normally add or do you keep it simple and, and classic? I love um, boiled eggs in tartar sauce ah. and capers and gherkins, basically. Lovely. Yeah. Right, so what I've done is I've just added my um, avo a little bit on the holer side and I'm using the back of my spoon to mash it into here because I also still want some of those chunks of the avo in there. I don't want it to be completely blended. But you are also able to blend everything into, uh, put everything into a blender and make a smoother sauce. I'm yes. one of those people that Chunky. like to bite into mm -hmm. every single thing that I'm making. It's definitely time. an experiential thing when enjoying it and I just had an experience of a lifetime. <laughs> the taste, that bite, exactly. talk about the perfect bite. <laughs> The fish, um, the fish strips were just succulent, decadent. I think a lot of people tend to over fry fish. Correct. And then it ends up becoming just dry, hard, and mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I want it still flaky and fall off, kind of fall off the bone, but there is no bone. And um, secondly, do me that tartar sauce. <laughs> Woo! Zesty, zingy. It really did bring my taste buds to life. I almost feel like a awake, even more awake. It is delicious, it is creamy, but also, it's very satisfying. Yes, and what you said about the fish being nice and tender, it's because you, le you leave it to cook, the residual heat as you take them out will continue to cook the fish. Ah. And now, Julie, you're our fishmonger here. We're using hake for this particular mm -hmm. recipe. What other fish would work well with this kind of recipe where the, re the short cooking process would work instead of too long? I mean, we could always uh, do this in the oven as well, but what other fish could we use? Um, we could use that farmed cob that we filleted earlier. Okay. We could definitely use angelfish, which is a nice sustainable option. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I would even use some yellowtail for this. Oh. Yellowtail cooks really quickly and you don't want to overcook it. Mm. I've noticed that you've mentioned a lot of the white fish though. Would we also be able to use like your trouts and your salmons? Trout would make, salmon would make delicious uh, goujons. <laughs> <laughs> Very delicious. Uh, as a fishmonger, I mean, you have, it almost it seems like, I, I whenever I deep fry something, I almost need a timer to yeah. get them this perfectly golden brown. What temperature does our oil need to be and how long do we need to kind of leave our fish strips in there for? So you want your temperature at about 180 degrees. So you can test that by putting a cube of bread in the, in the oil okay. and it will brown will brown within a minute, uh, 30 mm. seconds I think it is. And you've got a trick? Ah, yes. Or you could do this. Use the back of any wooden contraption you have at home, not only just wooden spoons. Dip it into your oil. As soon as it starts to bubble, then you know your oil is hot enough. Obviously, try and keep it on the, uh, that temperature. Don't make it too hot. Rather have it um, a little low mm -hmm. than increase it versus having it too hot because it'll just literally burn everything. Well, voila, look at this gorgeous finished product. I am sure anyone would be happy to eat this app. Now, if you want to get your hands on this recipe, simply head over to afternoonexpress.co.za.